Check this shit out. I feel like I've been getting a little too much into shitty game territory lately, so let's switch it up this week with a somewhat obscure classic, Euphoria. Originally titled Habarake when it came out on the Famicom in Japan, Euphoria was released for the NES in 1991, but only in PAL regions for some reason, which is a real bummer. This game combines the exploration and item upgrading mechanics of Metroid with the character swap puzzle platforming of Little Samson. And yeah, that's obviously strong company to keep. Does it play on the North American top loader? Mmm, yes. Let's go. This game was made by Sunsoft, who are kind of the unsung heroes of the NES library with strong titles like Batman and Batman Return the Joker, Blaster Master, Journey to Silius, Gremlins 2, and another great PAL exclusive I talked about recently but haven't made a full review for yet, Mr. Gimmick. If you've played any or all of those titles, then you know that Sunsoft doesn't fuck around when it comes to quality, especially with the music. Euphoria has a vibrant, upbeat soundtrack that rivals any on the NES in terms of catchiness. I like to think that the characters can hear the music too, and that's why they walk with such pep in their steps. So what's Euphoria all about? Well, basically you're in an open worldish space and you can travel in any direction so long as you're able to navigate it. You start off as Bop Louie, who is like the Mario of this adventure, and he runs and jumps well, but that's about it. As you progress through the game, you'll either find obstacles you can't quite overcome yet, or you'll encounter one of your three buddies. They don't remember you at first, but after a pretty simple face toss mini game, they come back to their senses and join you. Each of them has a different ability that then lets you explore a new area of the game. Freon Leon can walk on ice and swim, Shades can jump real high and sort of float too, and Gil can go below the surface of the water. Gil? Nice. Shout out to my brother-in-law, Gil. You'll also pick up attack upgrades for each character and a few extra abilities that allow you to access new sections like Gil's bomb or Bop Louie's plunger that lets him hump climb his way up walls. At some point, you'll find more items, fight bosses, and collect three keys to open this mystery door and reach the end of the game. You attack by jumping on enemies, but unlike the typical Mario stomp, you have to press down when you do so, a la Scrooge's pogo bounce. Otherwise, you in turn get hit. I'm not really sure why they do this here, but you get used to it after a while. Each character also gets a secret attack at some point, but you really don't need them. The challenge of Euphoria isn't combat or platforming, even though there's plenty of both, it's in the exploration. You've got a map to consult, but while it's a little confusing, it isn't quite Symphony of the Night, and figuring out where to go is fairly intuitive. As you collect more party members, you can start trying to access the pink dots on the map, which hold all the health upgrades and whatnot. Beyond the exploration, the main thing that really draws you into Euphoria is the charm. This game is just chock full of it. The backgrounds and environments are really bright and colorful, and each area has a distinct feature and feel, punctuated by the shifting themes and music. The enemy sprites are really cutesy, almost Sanrio-esque, like this fish with a face sticking out of its mouth or these weirdos climbing all over the trees. The little bosses are real goofy, and the final enemy is like something straight out of Mega Man. Best of all are the main character sprites, who are like something I'd hope to find in a claw game at a Japanese arcade. They just look so goddamn cute. It's adorable. Each of them has funny little animations for when they walk or swim on the wrong surface. Oops. Watch out, little buddy. And Jesus Christ, just look at them crawl. The cuteness is killing me! Uh-oh, somebody's gonna leave a streak on the carpet! Are there any downsides to Euphoria? I mean, yes, but they're pretty minor all things considered. You can continue as many times as you want, but you always start back at the beginning of the game. Sometimes you want this to happen since Euphoria involves a decent amount of backtracking, but other times you'll be letting out a long sigh of frustration before trotting your way back to where you left off. There's no save function, but there is a password system, and man, this is no joke. If you thought Mega Man passwords were complicated, they've got nothing on Euphoria. If you're like me, you'll take a picture of this rather than jotting down color names on a grid or something, but still, that's a lot. Other than that, yeah, Euphoria is excellent. Top notch. If you played something like Legacy of the Wizard, 
another Metroidvania-esque Nintendo title where you switch between characters with different abilities, you'll know that while it's ambitious and complex, the controls and backtracking ultimately make it more frustrating than fun. It's like the developers at Sunsoft took that game and just perfected every aspect of it in terms of accessibility, playability, and just overall presentation. If Euphoria had been released in North America, I think you'd see it crack more top 20 or even top 10 NES games lists. It's that good. I really can't say enough about how awesome Euphoria is. If you've got a top loader, you can get a copy sent over from Europe right now for about 100 bucks. But if that seems like kind of a hassle, I'm sure there's plenty of other ways it can be played. Check it out.